All right, Fight Fans, joining us now, friends to the room, one of the most exciting fighters in all of boxing, Senisa Estrada, unified champ. What's up, champ? Hey, guys, thank you for having me on. My pleasure. Congratulations, a big win. Uh, first off, uh, Tina uh, Rupshaw, did she, was she better than you expected? You know, I knew going into the fight and studying Tina beforehand that she is a tough fighter. She's a good fighter and she makes fights difficult for all of her opponents because of her height. I mean, it's it's hard fighting short fighters who, you know, keep their hands high and stay tucked in a shell because it's hard to land clean, solid shots on them. And um, I knew that going into the fight. So in this training camp, I worked extremely hard on making sure that each sparring session, I was following the game plan from round one to round 10 or round 12 or 14, however many rounds I sparred. I wanted to stick with um, keeping my distance, using the jab, using my footwork and switching stances in order to uh, throw Tina off so that way she can't get comfortable. You know, her favorite punch is an overhand right and she lands it anytime she wants on her opponent. So I wanted to let her know from the first round that you can't you can't land that punch on me. I mean, she landed it, of course, it's a fight. She landed it like twice, but um, I completely avoided it throughout the whole fight. And that's what really that's what really threw her off mentally. And I knew little by little as the rounds go on, she would um, be forced to, to really just not know what to do and just come forward and try to be aggressive, which is really what I wanted from her. Did she have any pop or has anyone ever buzzed you at all? Um, Tina, no, did not have um, much pop in her punches. And um, I have not been really buzzed or hurt in a fight. Um, you know, hopefully, I mean, I'm sure it'll it'll happen someday, but <laughs> maybe. Now, you, you never know. Now, maybe you just I'm have not. that that chin. <laughs> maybe you just have that special <laughs> maybe, yeah, chin. Yeah, I think I think I just like it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> now, who was the hardest punch you ever faced? The hardest punch I've ever faced was um, fighters in the beginning of my career. Like the toughest mm. fights of my career, I mm. think have been in the beginning of my career, fights that weren't seen, you know, mm. fights that took place um, from the first fight of my career to maybe like the 10th fight of my career because yes. I was fighting girls who were naturally so much bigger uh, than me physically. And I was fighting out of my weight class. A lot of fights, I had to take fights with girls who were like at bantam weight or even higher than that. Um, but it's just something that I had to do in order to to build my record and to stay active because I wanted to fight. Um, so yeah, I think the the hardest punchers and the toughest fights were definitely early in my career when I was fighting a lot heavier. Okay. Now in in this fight, you know, some people were saying the scorecards were too wide. Have you took your time to watch the fight, and what's your response to that? Um, I did, and the scorecards. I don't think they were wide at all. I think I, from after the first round, I knew that my game plan was going to work exactly the way I wanted it to work. Um, and I knew that each round would be, would be pretty clear. I mean, I didn't really, I didn't really go back to a corner after each round thinking, did I, did I win that round? And uh, my team is very good at, at letting me know that, they're, they're, you know, that letting me know if I need to, if a round is close or if um, I'm falling behind. And I didn't really feel that happening throughout the fight because, like I said, um, I, I, stood in, I stood intact with the game plan and I made sure I didn't stay out of it. And I know towards like the end of the fight, like round, sometimes around seven, around eight to 10, I wanted to just, the fighter in me just wanted to stay in there a little bit more and just like put the pressure on her even more. But my right. trainer kept yelling out, stick to the game plan. She wants to lure, lure you in. That's what she wants. She wants you to get aggressive so you can land, she can land that overhand right. Um, so I had to just stay composed and, and stay focused on, on keeping my distance and just boxing and moving. Yeah, she just broke that down, man. She, <laughs> you're just one of the best fighters I've ever seen in the female division. She's good on TV too, you know? A hundred percent. But listen, we spoke to Clarissa Shields recently and a few days ago and she gave her top 10 and she had you at number 10. And I was like, yo, Shanice is better than most of those people you named. Now let's just say that the pound for pound list is a real thing. Let's just say that, right? Cause some people don't care and I'm with that. Where do you put yourself on a pound for pound list? <laughs> I got you. I got you number four only because those other three, they done did so much. <laughs> it's just <laughs> wrong for me to put you above them. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't know where Clarissa got number 10 from. I mean, I think um, she hasn't seen you. I think she no, admitted no, it too, Aqua. Remind me. I think no, she, she said did, she, did she hasn't say, really seen you fight enough. I think I need to see enough. more of her. I haven't she seen enough. That. She did yeah. say that. Right. Yeah. 
Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think I, I, uh, like I was telling people, like, I don't really think about the pound for pound list. Like mm -hmm. I just, I just fight and do my thing. And like, uh, like I tweeted the other day that Roy Jones called me immediately after the fight and said that I'm pound for pound on his, I'm number wow. one pound on his list. Oh, don't, don't that's enough. Like, that means something. That means <laughs> that's something. After reading that text, I was like, F all of y'all, pound for pound. I don't care. So, so wait, wait a minute. Did so, you, did you was, screenshot that and put it on Instagram? You should have screenshotted that text and put it out there. Yeah. So after hearing that from Roy, I was like, man, I don't care about any of these pound for pound lists. Like, I'm number one of my favorite fighters. Oh, pound for wow. Pound that just made me so happy. But I mean, um, you know, I give, I give credit to, to all the women out there that are, you know, Amanda, Katie, Clarissa, uh, Bumgarner, um, Michaela, like everyone's just just doing their yeah. thing. There's so much talent in women's boxing right now. But um, I mean, I'm not one to, to say where I think I belong on the pound for pound list. Of course, we all think that we should be number one on the pound for pound list. Like, which one? Right. Who? Which one of us wouldn't think that? Um, but I just think that if I continue to just fight the way I did my last fight and stay active this year and show my skills and talent. Um, you know, people people will be able to to have me at number one and, and put me there themselves. I think that's what it's about because in reality, we kind of changed it during this generation to where the pound for pound list involves um, accolades. But back yeah. in the days, it was really about skill set. So if we're talking skill set, you're you're one of the best best. You're you're one of the top. You know what I mean? So do you think that when it comes to accolades though, you gotta beat somebody like your Costa or maybe even more fights than that to be at number one? Yeah, I totally agree, which is why for a while I was kind of confused about yeah. pound for pound list because like you said, it's not the way it used to be. Right. Uh, pound for pound meant skill skillfully who would win no matter the weight, if everybody right. was the same weight. And exactly. now it seems about it seems like it's about belts. There's girls who are ahead of me who don't even have the, the skills that I have, but they have more belts than I have. Right. Um, so that's something that, you know, kind of, it's different now. Uh, like you said- You're talking about my cat skill, of course. <laughs> no, I'm just, I don't know, I'm talking about whoever. <laughs> yeah, let me ask you this, Anissa. Uh, you know, Some I, women that are ahead of me. <laughs> but, um, One of the most historic fights I've ever been to, male or female, was Katie Taylor, man, and Serrano, right? It was the energy, yeah. it was just insane. And because they have each other, Right. They, they have each of them have their dance partner and people still want to see the rematch. Is it frustrating, frustrating to you that you haven't found that yet? And, and, and is that what you need to be the superstar that you deserve to be? Um, I think I think there's um, yeah, I think there's opponents out there for me where I can um, uh, it can it can be a big fight like like Katie and Amanda. And, and that fight was just incredible and it was amazing to be at because it was such a, a great matchup with two great fighters and I think um I think that can that can definitely happen for me and throughout my career with, with certain fighters and there's so many talented good fighters in the smaller weight division so I'm they just never there was never anybody like me to be able to give that exposure to them and now right. all the women in min, at minimum weight light flyweight and flyweight they want their dream is now to come to the U.S. and fight me because they know it's such a big opportunity they know it's a great platform they know that they're going to make uh, the biggest payday um, of their careers so um, with that, I think that I can, I definitely have big fights out there that um, people would, would definitely be interested in that can that can make uh, a Katie and Amanda type of fight. See, that's what I was going to ask you because you're a name, but they're not a name. And, and the reason why they got so much money is because they had that rivalry. They accomplished what they accomplished on their own and they created a rivalry. Do you think that maybe even though you beat her already, Marlon Esparza is that person? Um, honestly, I think I can I can go on with big fights without Marlon Esparza and make the money that I want to make without okay. her. But I am willing to fight her again, of course, because I know it's a fight that the fans want to see. Where at? Back at 112 or what? Um, well, obviously I'll have to go to 112 because she won't come down to, <laughs> she won't come down and meet me anywhere. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll go to 112. I'll even go to 115 if she wants Damn. to gonna move up and go to 115 yeah, well, but what, I, would do, what, I, that, I mean what's I, 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 the heaviest you would ever do um you know i walk around i walk around at maybe 114 115 the most wow. i can't go higher than 115 that's with me eating whatever the hell i want wow. um so 
it would be difficult for me to like fight at bantamweight, but I actually have said that recently that um, after being undisputed at, at the at my my natural weight classes, I totally be down to have a fight at bantamweight just to just to challenge myself. I don't know. I think it would be. Right. You um, have to hit the weights, <laughs> you know. I got to hit the weights, and I mean, I'll have a great training camp. I'll be able to go to McDonald's every day. And <laughs> 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 but um, I don't know. I, I think a fighter like like Ebony Bridges would be cool. It would be it would be a mm. fun fight. I really love Ebony. Oh, wow, I think, wow. I think she's she's done a great job at um, at just promoting herself and just not giving a damn what anybody thinks. And I really right. admire her for that. And I think her and I, you know, promotional wise and um, ex- as far as styles and excitement, would be a really fun fight. So I she looks about- she looks way bigger than you. Oh yeah, she is <laughs> way bigger than you. Way bigger than you. You you're something else. I tell you, you're something else. <laughs> I'd like to see that years to come. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Uh, listen, let me, let me get you. I, I, want, I want some predictions out of you, Sinisa. Look, there's a lot. There are a lot of big fights happening. Uh, one of the biggest in boxing, all the boxing is obviously Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia. A lot of people are picking Tank. Most people are. Um, how does that fight play out? Well, I mean, I'm I'm Team Ryan. I'm I'm friends with Ryan. Uh, friends with Ryan's family. But as far as you know, uh, so I'm Team Ryan no matter what. <laughs> but um, mm-hmm. I know it's gonna be it's going to be a good fight. It's a fight that you, you can't really predict what's going to happen because they're, they're, they both have the skills. They both have the the power and anything can happen with one punch. And that's the most yeah. intriguing thing about this fight. So I'm just excited to just see what's going to happen from the first round. And if it goes to the last round, how, who's going to be the one to stay mentally strong and to, and to be able to just control the fight and, and stay away from one another's power. Yeah. You know, you had mentioned one time that Canelo is one of your favorite fighters. Do you think that Canelo should rematch Bivol if he gets past John Ryder? Do you think he should rematch Bivol at 175 where he lost to him at or at 168 and defend his titles? I mean, I would like to see him at 168 and just fighting. I feel like the, the I love how he took the risk to go up and yeah. Canelo doesn't, doesn't fear anyone. And I give him so much credit for just mm-hmm. having so much heart and, and doing that. But at the same time, Vo was just so much bigger and he's a very he's a good fighter. He's great at at keeping his distance and, distance. and having a really good stance. And that's kind of what uh, kind of what um, that's the advantage he had against Canelo. And Canelo tried his best, but I think I would like to see him stick to his more natural weight classes. Well, his okay. natural weight class is 168, even though he's small for that weight class. And recently we just had David Benavidez on and he's been clamoring for that Canelo fight. Is is that a fight that you would want to see Canelo in, David Benavides? Yeah, I would him? love to see Canelo versus David Benavides. I think that'll be um, a very good fight. And I thought the the Plant Benavides fight was very good. I, I'm a I'm a fight I'm a fan of of Plant. I think he has really good really good footwork and, and movement and good boxing ability. But um, I just I just wasn't sure if he was going to be able to to keep that up throughout the fight without you know, without getting too tired or without getting caught with big punches. But he showed so much heart in that fight. It was it was really good. You know, before you get out of here, I just want to tell you about that piece that you did with Mark Kriegel when you you, you talked about your father, where your father was talking about committing, wanting to commit suicide. Then he had a dream. And then you said he knew that before you were born, by the way, and, and you said that he knew that I needed him. Oh my God, that brought tears to my eyes. That was just <laughs> an amazing thing to see the relationship that you guys have and how you feel about your father and look how successful you are now. And meanwhile, he could have killed himself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it was it was really great that my story was was shared with with everyone. And, and I've met so many people um, after it was aired that just were so just touched by it and inspired yeah. because you know, it's it's real. It's real life about my my dad's uh, uh, drug addiction and and him being in and out of prison and just um, turning his life around when when he overdosed and around the time that I first started boxing. It kind of it's completely saved his life and changed his life. And I'm just glad that our story can inspire people and um, can can relate to so many people. Amen. Would you say that your driving motivation, a big part of it, is to make him proud? Definitely. Yeah. But I mean, I think 
Yeah, I'm motivated so much by by just making him proud and 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 letting him know that all of the years of of time and money and sacrifice that he put into me to in the amateurs throughout my pro career to so I can be where I'm at today. I just want him to know that um, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it worth it. Wish my kids would say that about me. When did you when did you oh. realize this? Did you always feel that way or did you give your father problems with a bad attitude and then you change? <laughs> no. Of course we of course him being my trainer from the age of 8 to 16 like we bumped heads of course yeah. like any, like any father son or or, right. or father daughter relationship would be but um yeah. He's been, he's just, he's just so great. Like he never asked for anything, which is like the most amazing thing. Like he's willing to, he was willing to step aside uh, when I was 16. So that way uh, my trainer who I have now, Dean Campos can, can take over and, and mm -hmm. teach me new things and take me to another level. And, and that's not, that's not easy. It's for not a lot easy of at all. No. Nope. And, Without uh, animosity. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And he never takes, you know, never wants to take the credit for anything. And he's just, um, you know, after after every fight, I'm like, I'm like, Dad, like, what do you need? What can I buy you? And he's just like, Oh, can you just like maybe buy me some breakfast? And I'm like, Dad, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have my son watch this interview over and over again so he can learn how to treat your your father. No, but you, yeah, if your son asks you, you'd be like, Oh, can you buy me this car? Can you buy me this? Car? <laughs> But um, look, uh, your <laughs> story is amazing, and, and you obviously have made him proud, and, and you you yeah. took advantage of all those opportunities. Can't wait to see you in the ring again, champ. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you guys so much. Bye. All right, all right take care. Bye bye. Introducing the new DAZN Boxing Show podcast. No matter the time or the place, getting your boxing content has become easier than ever. Tune in as we give you exclusive insights, predictions, fight night recaps and more alongside the biggest names in the game, all for free. Available globally every Thursday across all audio streaming platforms and with new episodes dropping weekly to give you the latest news. Just type in the DAZN Boxing Show podcast, listen in and enjoy.